50-50 relationships. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How are you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, this is a conversation I was just having the other day, and a person wanted to share with me why they believe and why they share with others that relationships are 50-50. And I heard them out, and I listened to them. And, you know, everyone has the right to their own perspective and their own views. But what I was sharing with him is, what is 50-50? What does that actually mean? There's uh, some relationships where people believe, like, when we go out to dinner, I'm going to pay my half, I'm going to pay half of the bill, you pay half of the bill. Okay, that's 50-50. And... They'll talk about different things that you do in the relationship, you know, and it's usually when it comes from an economical perspective, you can measure a 50-50. But when it comes to the emotional perspectives, how do you know or where do you draw the line of when I'm giving 50% and what is 50% that I'm giving to the relationship? Because what I was sharing with this individual was 50% means I'm not giving my all to you. And if I'm not giving my all to you, I'm giving like half. Then that's a dangerous place to live because the reality is if you're not giving your all to a relationship, and that's why I'm a firm believer in everyone gives 100% to the relationship, um, whatever your 100% is. And that just means you're giving your all to the relationship. Because if you're only, and that's what I was sharing with them, if you're not giving your all in a relationship, don't you think I feel that? Don't you think that's going to come across pretty obvious to me that you're not really truly committed to the relationship? Because like I shared with the person, I said it's like one foot in and one foot out. How is that going to make a relationship work? Because that would be 50-50, right? I'm half in, I'm half out. And if I'm feeling like I'm only getting 50% from you, in most people's instances, and I'm not talking about me because I'm not a person that responds based on the way you respond. I don't believe in that treat people the way they treat you. I don't buy into that because I believe you don't let other people's actions dictate who you are. You guys follow me? If you're a person of high character and high integrity, just because someone else demonstrates that they lack it shouldn't deter or influence you to become that person and return the favor. That's why I'm not a person that believes in, you know, when I hear people say, well, my partner cheated, so I went out and cheated to show them how I felt. That doesn't make sense to me because the most valuable person, place, or thing that you will ever have is you. And the fact that you're willing to give up the most valuable thing, which is you, to someone else, to get back at someone else, you guys follow me? Where's the logic in that? That to me is the same as taking uh, poison and again, expecting someone else to be hurt by it or hoping that someone else is hurt by it. Don't allow other people's lack of character or if they do have character, um, you can let them, if they do have character influence you. <laughs> but anyway, the key is you have to determine for yourself uh, what works for you and allow what, what, what's going to move you in the direction you want to be, be those influences. So the bottom line, what I'm getting to and what I was sharing with this person is you got to give everything you have to a relationship. And their thing was, they said, well, no one gives 100% because we don't even know what we're capable of as a, hum as a human being. And I get that particular argument. And I tell people, I said, but 100% doesn't mean 100% in the terms of what is all possible because they say as human beings, uh, most people only use about 5% of their brain, uh, of their uh, brain uh, intelligence or however we want to put that. So if that's true, even if you gave 100% of the 5% that you're using, you still fall short as far as using 100%. Because the 100% would be unrealistic. It's the same thing, and I was sharing with this person. It's the same as if you're playing sports. And I played basketball, so I can relate. I'm not going to run up and down the court full speed, 100 miles an hour, all the time, 
which would be technically, if you want to say what is 100%, because I still wouldn't know what 100% is because however, whatever I consider to be my fastest at that moment, it's not necessarily my fastest. Why? Because maybe I'm a little more tired than I was the first time I ran. You guys know what I'm talking about. Like if you run a 100-yard dash, your times will be different depending on how many, how, when was the last time you ran? Did you stretch right? How fast you got a block? Those are all, but it doesn't mean you didn't give 100% each time. You guys follow me? You're giving the best that you have at the moment. So to think, it's the same thing when I hear people use the analogy of, um, some people have argued that you have to divide your time, you have to balance your life, and they use the example of, that's impossible because you're not going to spend eight hours a day sleeping, eight hours a day eating, eight hours a day working. That's just impossible. The hours are not going to work out. That's not what balance means. Balance means no one will feel neglected. And that's the same thing with the 100% in a relationship. No one will feel as if they're being cheated. Today, I may work 15, 16 hours but the family knows why I'm working 15, 16 hours, but I'm going to make that up. Not, I can't make up those hours, forget that. But in terms of the time I'm going to spend with them to let them know valuable, because when we're talking balance, we're not talking time. We're not sitting here saying it got to be eight hours, four hours, three hours and all that. That's not ba what balance means. It means everyone is going to get just what I'm talking about here they're going to get the 100% and they're going to know they got the 100%. And because of that, they're going to feel that they're, um, they're significant in my life. And that's what's important. The kids are not going to tell you, as a parent, you need to be with me 24-7. They understand that's unrealistic. But what they don't understand is if you spend no time with them or if you're in the house, you're in one room and they're in the other room, which means you guys are still not spending time quality time together, you just happen to be in the same facility, vicinity, I should say. And it's the same thing with your partner. Just because we're in the same house, if we're not doing anything together, that's not going to cause our relationship to become tighter. You guys follow me? This is not about hanging out. The 100% means that the partner or the children know how it's significant they are to you based on the quality of time that you spend with them, the quality of getting into their lives. That's not going to be time. That's going to be, well, I mean, you got to spend time, don't get me wrong, to, with them, but I'm saying it's not a balance of time when we're saying balance. Like it's got to be eight hours, four hours, whatever. Um, because I've had people ask me that, like, even with the kids, they're like, well, my job will keep me away from birthdays. Well, then you got to do their birthday on a different day. But you can't miss the birthday. You can't, and you can't miss all the birthdays. You need to make sure that the kid knows that sometimes, and I, and I do get it, folks. I understand there's people in certain professions that they travel a lot, and it's hard to work those things out. But when you get home, your kids need to know where they stand. They need to still have that party with you. They need to have that celebration with you. Um, and then that means you have to do two parties, the party on their birthday with everybody else, a party you do with them, and it could be just you, or you have to get some more people together and do another one, that, whatever it takes. But the bottom line is just what I said, whatever it takes. That's what balance is. No one feels left out. The business is not going to be sacrificed. The family is not going to be sacrificed. And as you guys know, and the reason I'm using the word sacrifice, because that's exactly what to me balance means. No one is going to feel sacrificed because you guys know, I believe in a relationship, sacrifice should not exist. Even though people keep telling you, you need to learn in relationships to sacrifice. I said, no, you don't. You need to learn how to compromise. The misconception or misunderstanding of compromising is people think that means I always have to get something out of it in terms of if we came up with the, the example of if we were going shopping and she wanted a dress and I wanted some shoes and okay and the bottom line is we talk it out and we're not going to be able to get both 
And so we, we, we talk and we talk, and then she ends up with the dress. A sacrifice is if I walk away and the only thing I can think about is the fact that I didn't get my shoes. And I feel like I gave up on what I wanted in order to have her have what she wanted. A compromise is walking away from that same situation and being excited at the fact that, wow, well, at least she has what she wanted. I know she feels good and I feel good about the fact that she feels good. And I understand that the shoes are something that I'll be able to get down the line. Why? Because it's not a sacrifice. It's something that I understand that this is just the things that we have to adjust and be willing to give a little in order to... Um, um, to be able to, what, what, if we want them to accept or give back to us later down the line. In other words, for them to be okay with us getting the shoes down the line when they can't get something else. And that's a compromise. It doesn't mean in this particular conversation, I'm getting what I want. I've used the example of, of, of just using that. Uh, uh, my, my wife used to love to go shopping. I didn't, but she wanted me to go. I had to find out how can I turn that into a compromise because technically I could have made it a sacrifice because the fact is I didn't want to go shopping. I don't like to shop. But I love to, uh, to watch people and because people are funny with, to me. You can sit back and laugh at them all day, all day long, the things they do and say. And I said, but I can people watch. And you guys follow me? That's the compromise is I found a way to take something that could have been a sacrifice because if it was a sacrifice, I'd have been sitting there with my arms uh, uh, folded the whole time, sitting there like, <sighs> I sure be glad when we leave. See, that's when it becomes a sacrifice. And you guys don't, like I've said before, if people have to sacrifice, they start to keep score. They may not actually write it on a board. They might not put it on a paper, but they start to keep score and they go, okay, I lost in that particular issue. And every time they lose, they're checking off, I lost. And eventually, you're going to have that conversation where the person goes, I'm the only one given in this relationship. I'm always sacrificing. It has to be a compromise where the person walks away and feels like, I still feel good. I didn't necessarily get what I asked for, but I still feel good. I'm excited about the outcome because I figured out a way to make it a win-win. And I just use that example just so you guys know. It doesn't mean that you got something out of it. Hopefully, when you have conversations, you get in these situations, you can always get some of the things you want. They get what they want, and everybody walks away happy. But sometimes, I just wanted to make that clear, sometimes you don't necessarily get the material things or even the decision that you wanted, but you're okay. And I mean, not saying it with your mouth, because me the person was having a conversation about that, but you don't, what if you did that and you didn't really mean it? Then it's a sacrifice. You guys follow me? There's a difference. It's a sacrifice. If you don't mean it, you could tell the other person you're cool with it. But if you're not, it's a sacrifice. You got to learn how to get better at compromising. So anyway, back to the whole conversation we were having here. And that's that in relationships, it shouldn't be a sacrifice. It has to be you're giving 100% because you're committed to the relationship. Because again, if you're not giving 100 I know it. And that's why I use the analogy of I'm playing sports. I'm not running 100 miles an hour, but I have a strategy. And that's why they tell you the difference in those, the, the, the athletes that are good and the great. During the game, they're not running full speed the whole time, which is what this person was thinking when they're saying 100%. But they're strategizing and they're giving what they have at this moment so that they'll have enough energy later down. And that's when you get good at what you do. You know when to give all in terms of, if we're talking about from sports, where you're going to run as fast as you can. And other times when you need to slow down because you need to conserve your energy. And what I'm getting to is in relationships. That doesn't mean every day when you get up, you're feeling 100%. I'm in love. I just want to be with you. I just want to... Welcome to the real world. That doesn't mean you're not giving 100% to the relationship. You're still committed to the relationship. That's the 100%. That I am committed that whatever's going on, I'm going to make this work. Even if I was in a bad mood, I'm not going to go in here and, and destroy her or talk bad to her or mistreat her. Why? Because I'm committed to the relationship. If I'm in a 50% and I really don't care, 
that's the, exactly the way I'll come across when, I, when I'm in front of the person and our relationship will start to be strained. So the bottom line is never ever believe the concept that in a relationship, it's okay to give 50%. If we're talking from an economical perspective, and that's even dangerous, when everything that you do, you go, well, you pay half, I'm gonna pay half. Um, I used to uh, tease uh, Terry and her sister about that because it's kind of like whenever they were paying each other back, like from, you know, like they went out to dinner and someone paid or the other one paid, they'd be like, oh, well, last time you paid, and so, you know, I owe you 10 for that, and I owe you. 12 for this and they're sitting there really figuring this out and I used to sit there and just shake my head and I used to laugh and they'd be like what's so funny I said this doesn't make any sense to me who cares why are you keeping score the bottom line is you treat it I treat it we're good and eventually we got to that point but at first I mean I used to just sit there and laugh because most of the time when they got through they're like oh so we're we're we're, we're even Really? Who cares? What, you're a dollar off, two dollars off? So now you, you, the other person is ahead. <laughs> That's too much work. I'm committed to the relationship. None of that other stuff matters. If I treat it today, I'm not sitting there going, now there's a difference, and that's where we're talking about this 50 versus 100. If I'm always treating when we go out to steak dinner, and you're only treating when we go out for two-for-one pizza, or we go to McDonald's or Taco Bell, eventually that's going to be a, a, a challenge in our relationship because the person again starts to realize that you, because I remember who was, I had some, had some people say this one time, oh, they were saying that when they would go out to the club, they were doing the Uber Lyft, and one of the people wanted to pay when they go to the club. And then they wanted the other person to pay when they left the club. And, and the person looked and said, you must be crazy. They said, because you know good and well when we leave a club, that's when it's going to cost more money because the rates go up. That's my point. When you're doing stuff like that, we pick up on that as human beings. I get to see what you're doing. You're actually using me because you're always trying to figure out how you win. Remember, we're talking about sacrificing and compromising. You're trying to figure out how you could keep winning in every situation. That's why you want to pay up front, even though it looks on the outside like, oh, you really care because you're paying on the way up. But the reality is you're thinking about on the way back that I'm paying more money. So you feel like you won when it's all said and done because it costs you less money. That's using people. And again, people start to feel like that. And that's one of those. Again, they start to check that list that you're using me, it's, a, it's not a, a, a relationship that you're committed to, and your relationship will pay for it. So the bottom line, I think I'm pretty clear on that. Any relationship that you're in, and I believe you give that in all relationships, 100% is based on I am me 24-7. Whether you're talking to me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, podcasts, in person, around my family, it don't matter. When you meet Ron, you meet Ron. Those of you that listen to me talk, I'm going to be the same person. Why? Because I am authentic. If I am authentic, that means you're going to always get 100% from me, no matter what the relationship is. Because I am going to be true to that relationship. Doesn't mean all relationships are going to be the same. That's a difference, a, a conversation when we talk about intimacy and all that. That's a whole different conversation. I could be 100% committed to the relationship where you and I are just friends. We just hide, whatever. I'm still committed to that relationship. What, think, you have to think in terms of what are you committed? What is your definition of commitment? And to me, it's just being authentic to whatever it is that's going on. And that is committed because of the fact that you're authentic. Be real in all your relationships. Don't half step. Don't be one of those that people say, well, give a little and see what they give back. And then you give a little more to see if this relationship works. No, because if once I feel that you're not giving your all, it's going to affect the relationship for most. I'm not saying me, because it's like I told you before, I'm gonna give who I am. I just may not deal with you because I realize you're not giving a hundred. 
So, all right. But anyway, I, I, I hope that came across pretty clear. And uh, as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, run over to ronsip5myers.online. Again, that's ronsip5myers.online. See what I got going on. Uh, and I look forward to talking to you guys on, um, what is it, Monday? Self-Love Monday. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Be authentic. Give 100% in everything that you do. Why? Because you're a person of character and integrity. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.